All right. Um, everybody loves and supports Georgia. Why? Because they're really, really good. And they are marching now to a second consecutive um, unbeaten regular season. And oh, by the way, that's going to be a bet next year. Speaking of bet online, um, will Georgia lose a regular season game again next year? It's getting very Alabama-esque at this point uh, for Georgia. That said, they're not going to lose to Georgia Tech on Saturday. I know, I know. It's not going to happen. Um but there is some concern around Georgia. Now, I have talked around con- the concerns about um, Stetson Bennett and his sort of inability to take care of the football. Uh, our buddy Seth Emerson of The Athletic points out another problem that sort of came to life on Saturday against Kentucky uh, and you know, has been something that has sort of plagued Georgia all season long under the radar, but because they keep winning – it's not really coming to the forefront, and that is their lack of touchdowns in the red zone. Now, Georgia has the best red zone percentage in the nation when you count field goals, but including only touchdown, Georgia falls all the way to 52nd in the country. Uh, On Saturday, they went to the red zone five times. Georgia only got in the end zone once. Settled for three Jack Pudlesny field goals and decided to go for it from fourth and goal from the one, didn't get it. So. Is this a real problem for Georgia? Um, You could argue that it is, uh, but you could also argue this is maybe a little bit more about Todd Munkin and the offense trying to get too cute. Georgia averages 5.4 yards per rush and probably has two of the most tight end dominant, uh, has two of the most dominant tight ends rather in the entire sport. Uh, and how do they not just make this that simple? You could call it coaching. You could call it play calling. You could call it execution. You could call it a lot of things. Uh, not everything is, you know, actually, uh, uh, you know, not everything is the same on all those red zone drives, so it's hard to figure out. Um, runs from the five-yard line or closer. Georgia has rushed it 41 times, scoring on 19 of those rushes, an average of 2.16. That ranks 40th out of 77 teams with at least 20 such attempts. On passes from the five-yard lines are closer. Georgia's 8 of 12 with six touchdowns. That's tied for 13th most in that situation. No interceptions, no sacks. And and to Stetson Bennett's credit, of all the turnovers he's made, he hasn't turned the ball over in the red area. Um, Here's the thing. And this is probably why this hasn't come to the forefront as a bigger issue. And that simply is, Georgia can afford to get away with kicking field goals because their defense has been so good. Now, let's fast forward. Does that same situation apply when they face a team in the college football playoff? Now, I know, Georgia fans, I know, God forbid anybody think that somebody could beat Georgia. But, uh, you know, I would look at the Tennessee game is probably the one game that they've played this year against a college football playoff caliber team, right? And if you go to that game and sort of look at the 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 drive chart, you know, I mean, again, Georgia does this Kirby death march that results um, in a lot of touchdowns. Um, but, you know, their first touchdown was a 13-yard run by Stetson Bennett, so they were in the red area. Um, Their next touchdown was a 37-yard pass, not in the red area. Their third touchdown um, was a five-yard pass from Bennett from the five-yard line. Uh, They settled for another field goal. Where was that from? That was at the Tennessee two. But again, you know, again, situationally, when Georgia's up 21-6 and you're at the end of the first half, you obviously kick the darn field goal. They start out the second half. The drive stalls out at the Tennessee 20, even though they went 15 plays. Um, They kick a field goal, you know, and then they weren't in the red area the rest of the game. So situationally, the field goals haven't been hurting them because it's smart to take them. And that's the other thing. Georgia's never really trailed, right? Other than Missouri, they've never really trailed enough in any game where kicking a field goal was a net negative. Right. The problem was, is that Georgia kicked four field goals before they ever scored a touchdown in that game. 
They kicked two field goals in the second quarter, two field goals in the third quarter, and that was that. So, and was that important? Yeah, because, well, they never really were down by more than one touchdown at, at any point in that game. They were down by 10. Uh, they were down, I'm sorry, they were down by 13 at one point in the second quarter, but there's so much time left. Of course you kick the field goal. You know, situationally, again, they go down half 16 at six, their first drive out of the third quarter, you kick a field goal to make it 16 and nine because it's a touchdown game, right? Missouri kicks another field goal. You get down there, you're going to settle for another field goal. And Pud Lesney in that game had field goals of 34, 28, and 29. Those are all red zone area field goals. They just are. So um, that's the only game where it was ever in doubt that Georgia, you know, maybe needed to go for it when they didn't have to go for it. But when you play with the lead routinely, field goals aren't a bad thing. That's why this isn't being talked about. Now, when you get into a game against a team like, you know, Ohio State, if they're fourth or whatever, or Michigan or or USC, a team that can score and score very quickly, can you settle for field goals? Nobody really knows the answer to that. We'll find out. But that really is something that needs to be considered um, when it comes to how this team performs in the college football playoff. Will it hurt them? Chances are no, because again, their defense is so good, but just something to think about. If you get a game where the perfect storm comes together, Stetson Bennett not taking care of the ball and settling for field goals, you may allow a team to hang around longer than possible. And if it seemed like USC that has a high powered offense, not say, I think USC's offense is everybody, every bit as good as Tennessee's for the record. That said, um, you know, somebody would argue, well, Georgia's already played a USC offense. They did, and they also gave up 50 points in that game. The last time they played Oklahoma, uh, when Lincoln Riley was there with Baker Mayfield in the college football playoff. So, huh. we'll see how that goes. Anyway, just something to think about going forward. All right, speaking of the college football playoff, uh, their job's going to get really easy, and um, there there is a scenario where... Georgia's worst foe could end up in the college football playoff. I'll discuss that here in a moment. But first, it is time for our Shovels of Wisdom. Brace yourselves, because it's time for the Shovel of Wisdom. Yeah, you know how we do it every day. Somebody says or does something stupid, we have to reward them. We have to remind them how dumb they are and give them a shovel of wisdom. You can do so on my Twitter account, at Mark Zinno, M-A-R-K-Z-I-N-N-O. And I have to give myself a shovel here, guys. Why? Because I forgot to tell you about Bilt Bar and Bilt Bar Puffs and how delicious they are. I'm going to get to my regular shovel here in just a second. But if you guys haven't tried Bilt Bar Puffs, huh, no. Depriving yourself of one of life's greatest joys. These things are fantastic. And I say this because I've had them. I've tried them. Multiple flavors. They are perfect. The perfect snack. 160 calories, a whopping 15 grams of protein, covered in 100% real chocolate. Absolutely delicious. Especially their newest flavor, cookie dough chunk. It's got real chunks of cookie dough in it. It's so delicious. Perfect snack in between meals when you're on the go. Uh, something late at night after dinner where you don't want to be too stuffed and too filled. Built Bar Puffs, uh, amazing. Go to built.com, get a box for yourself, hide them from the kids, take it to the office, do whatever you need to do. These things are absolutely perfect for you. Again, go to built.com, use the promo code LOCKEDON15, you'll get 15% off your first order. Again, built.com, use the promo code LOCKEDON15, and you'll get 15% off your first order.